Hi, I'm Jonathan. I help people work better together at home and give people more freedom and accountability. With everything going on with the coronavirus, there's a lot of energy now around people working at home and wanting to do so more effectively. I've been working at home for years and uh, a lot of this is second nature to me, but I thought it would be a good time to share it. Um, most of my work actually involves working with groups and teams using new techniques for more uh, distributed decision making and things like that. But for today, we're just going to focus on some basic things you can do to work at home. This video should be about five or 10 minutes, and it's going to be a little bit different format than usual. I'm just going to kind of keep going through stuff and hopefully give you some things that you can take away. So I'm Jonathan, and I help people work better together on the internet and uh, give people more freedom and accountability. And let's get into it. So the tools can be divided into five different categories. You've got basic tools like technology platforms, uh, software tools, and then physical tools like webcams, microphones, things like that. Then there are personal techniques. These are personal productivity techniques that you can use for yourself that are especially useful when working at home. There are also communication techniques when working with others, um, ways you can get be more effective in your communication. And then finally, we have group techniques. These are things you do with other people when in a group. So we'll just go through each of these as quickly as we can, and um, hopefully I'll leave you with some ideas that will really help you get started and hopefully give you some next steps that you can take forward into your life. So I want to talk a little bit about some recommended technology platforms. A lot of these things may be obvious to some people, but you'd be amazed how many times I meet teams that don't even use shared document editing, for example. So let's just go through these and we'll touch on them. Um, these are all things that you should have available to you, and most of them are free. Uh, we're only going to go through the first three. These last couple are for a different uh, presentation. I'm just reusing this slide. So shared live document editing. What is that? This is a way that you can edit a word processing file um, or a spreadsheet where you and somebody else can look at it at the same time on different computers and make changes in real time. Now, 10 years ago, this was an amazing technology. These days, people say, oh, just make a Google Doc. Um, this is Google Docs. It's also Office 365, and there are other platforms like Notion and Coda, um, Smartsheets. There are plenty of tools that let you do this. The big one is Google Docs, and it's free. So if you're not using Google Docs, not only to create and edit, but also to share documents, you should really be doing that. It's just like Microsoft Office. It's just online. People are talking a lot about Zoom now, and Zoom is wonderful for video conferencing. Now, when you think video conferencing, you probably think, okay, we have a meeting and we look at, we look at each other's faces and we talk. That's half of it, but where Zoom really shines is in the screen sharing. Um, I'm actually recording this as a Zoom meeting right now. I'm using different software, but something else Zoom allows you to do is share your screen so anyone can see it. And then you can also do some really cool stuff like annotation. So using Zoom, I can highlight things. I can um, indicate right on the screen and mock up my screen so others can see it. It's very useful. Now, Zoom is free for two people. If you have more than two people, you have 45 minutes per call. And then at the end of that call, you can end it and start a new one. So even if you don't have a pro account, go install Zoom and you can, you can have large meetings where you just start the meeting every 45 minutes. That works fine. Zoom also works on your phone. So you can install Zoom on your phone and you can take a call right from your phone. If you're in the car, you can attend a meeting you know, through Zoom on your phone. So be sure to install Zoom on your phone. Let's talk a little bit about having a group communication platform. What do we mean by this? This is a place that's like a forum where everyone can talk about topics that is not email. Email is a kind of a one-to-one -one medium that you happen to be able to reply all on, which is just a terrible productivity sink. So the most popular tool out there, um, you've probably mostly heard of, you've probably mostly heard of this is, is Slack. Slack is great for real-time communications. You can start new conversations. You can upload documents. Um, there are also other tools like Asana has a great co uh, conversations feature that's not very well known. Asana is primarily a task manager, but also has teamwork features built into it. And then you've got Microsoft Teams and other tools. It's imperative that you have some sort of shared group communication platform that is not email. Which one you use, you know, it, it doesn't too much matter, but be sure you're using one of them. And then these other two are for um, a different type of work, which I would love to talk to you about, but it's beyond the scope of this conversation. So let's keep moving. 
So going through those five categories, first we're gonna talk about physical tools. And the first thing I wanna mention is get yourself an HD webcam. If you're doing lots of video, this is more for the benefit of the other people watching you, but the webcams on most laptops are pretty poor. And if you get, uh, for $100, you can get a nice HD webcam that will really make your picture a lot better and it'll help people feel a lot closer to you. The most popular one out there is the Logitech C920. Um, I think I have a picture of it here. This is the Logitech C920. It's the most popular webcam and it has incredible picture quality um, for what it is. So uh, you can't go wrong with a, with a C920. There's also one called the Logitech Brio. If you want to go up to a little bit higher quality, that one's about $200. You can pick that up. Another thing that people often don't think to get is a USB microphone. The microphones that we have in our laptops will pick up a lot of room audio or a lot of, a lot of the sound of the room echo. If you get a USB mic, um, you get really clear, clear sound and you can get them for really cheap. So I recommend the Fifine uh, USB microphone. It's about $30 on Amazon. Great mic, cheap, works well, uh, portable. Um, so another thing you can do on the hardware side is get yourself a USB microphone. Uh, if you're not using a secondary monitor, you may want to get one for your home setup. Uh, it improves productivity tremendously and it makes it a lot easier to get things done. It also, along with having a good keyboard and mouse, it's not something you might notice day to day, but over time, having a secondary monitor and a good ergonomic keyboard and mouse will just make your life working at home much easier and more comfortable. Um, and you can choose a keyboard and mouse that suits you. Uh, I like the Apple keyboards. I like a big chunky mouse because I have big hands. And then also good lighting is really useful to have uh, when you're doing video conferencing. Working in a well-lit environment is healthier for you. So if you can do your work by a window uh, or someplace where you can see outside, that's really good for you psychologically. And then also having a lot of light really helps when you're on a video call. The more someone can see you, the more that they can hear you, the more they can be with you and the more effective you can be in your online meetings. I also threw on here keyboard shortcuts. This applies to working at home or at the office. As much as you can, learn keyboard shortcuts and learn ways to operate your computer more efficiently. Uh, if you're at your computer all the time, this is a great way to make yourself more efficient and reduce, uh, reduce wrist strain by using keyboard shortcuts. So that's it for physical tools. Now let's talk about communication techniques. These are ways that you can be more effective in your communication with others when you're working online. Um, and there's just a few of them here. The first one is to make clear requests. What do we mean by that? Um, when you're asking for some, something, be clear about what you need. You can phrase it in a way that is really a little bit different than what you're probably used to. Instead of asking somebody to do something, say, would it make sense for you to do X, Y, Z? What this does is it causes people to internalize the, the request and take it on as their own. Would it make sense for you? Oh yes, that makes sense, I'll do that. It's not, I'm being told to do this and therefore I'll do it. Now that's more important when you're working remotely because everybody needs to be more accountable and take, on, take things on themselves because there's no boss standing over your shoulder to make sure that you get things done. So make clear requests and do it in the form of a question. Would it make sense for you to X, Y, Z? And see how it goes. I would love to hear about uh, if you try this technique out, what it does for you. Please leave a comment down below. Another good technique for working at home is learning how to set boundaries. Um, by this we mean just communicating expectations to people around what you're available for and what you're not. Now that we're working at home and uh, basically our home lives and our work lives are all jumbled together, I mean, this was already a problem, but it's just gonna get more pronounced now. So some things you can do are to tell people that you're only gonna check messages during certain times. Say, I'm only gonna check messages three or four times a day. Uh, and set the expectation that they won't be able to reach you all the time. And just because you're not available, it doesn't mean you're not working. You're actually protecting your time and creating space for yourself to be effective. Uh, so be responsible and set boundaries for yourself. Another thing you can do is to use the Do Not Disturb feature on your phone and on your computer. Um, Mac OS has a built-in Do Not Disturb feature that will turn off notifications. You can turn off your email notifications. You can put your phone on D&D. &D. Um, these techniques will give you more space to be effective. And there's nothing wrong with telling your boss, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be available. I'm going to be working. Let's move on to our next item here, which is communicating in public. What do we mean by this? 
it's important for all your communications to happen um, in a public forum. And now not public public, but in a forum where everyone on your team can see it. So anytime you're gonna communicate with someone, ask yourself, can I do this in a more public place? This has the benefit of bringing the team together more and keeping everybody informed so everyone can make good decisions. Um, it helps everyone know what's going on. And it sets a good example for creating team cohesion when everyone is remote. It also creates a, a, his, a history that can be utilized so other people can go back and look at decisions, um, which really just makes the team more effective. I actually like to say that it's actually kind of selfish to do communication one-on-one -on -one with people. It really robs the organization of learning. So do your communications in public. This is also sometimes called working out loud, which is a new trend in, uh, in some work environments. The next item I want to talk about is offering to help. Now, what do we mean by offering to help? Um, when you want somebody to do something or when somebody doesn't do something, instead of saying, hey, why didn't you get that done? Or I was really, need really needed that report by Tuesday. You can say, you know, is the report going to be on time? And if not, is there anything I can do to help you? What can I do to help you get that report? Right, reframe the question, reframe the request or the demand as an offer to assist. Now, if somebody really takes this on, they'll think about what they have the power to actually affect and how you can help them. So it really helps others when you offer them help. Let's move on to the next section, and that's personal techniques. These are things that you can do individually to be more effective when you're working at home. The first one is to keep a backlog. The word backlog comes from Agile, um, Agile Software Development, and it's basically just a stack-ranked list of tasks that you intend to do. Uh, by stack-ranked, we just mean it's ordered in priority with the most important thing on top. So uh, you can use a bunch of different tools for this. You can use Asana or Trello, Apple Notes. You can just use paper if you need to. Um, you don't have to share it with everyone, but it's very useful to be able to do that. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, you can use the GTD methodology, which is called Getting Things Done. Um, a man named David Allen wrote a book called GTD, and it's a very popular yeah. personal productivity methodology. So keep a backlog. This will help you stay organized and focused. And at the end of the day, it will also help you feel like you know what you got done, um, which is important. Feeling good and accomplished alone is important. There's no one external to give you that validation, so you need to find a way to generate it yourself. Our next item here is to use a timer. If you find that you're having problems prioritizing or getting things done or even knowing what you're up to, um, use a timer. Set a timer for 20 minutes and work for 20 minutes and then take a five minute break. There's a technique called the Pomodoro technique. Uh, it's named after the little red uh, tomato kitchen timer. And in the Pomodoro technique, we work for 25 minutes and then we take a five minute break. Work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break. You need to do this because you're not gonna be getting up from your desk as much. There's actually potentially fewer distractions at home. And so for your own physical and mental health, it's important that you take breaks. A good way to do that is using Pomodoro technique. Um, and also just to compartmentalize your work to say, okay, I'm gonna work for one hour on this. I'm gonna work for 30 minutes on this. Using a timer is a great way to divide up the day and make the whole experience much, much more pleasant. And also just pay attention to your self-care. Um, this can mean taking little walks, go for a walk around the block, get up from your desk, you know, go upstairs, fold some laundry, and then come back. You can do that on a Pomodoro break, which is something I often do. Um, do a little chore on your five minute break. Practice self-care, take walks, and drink water. Basic stuff. So that's personal techniques. Now let's talk about some group communication techniques. These are ways that you can be more effective when you're working with a group remotely which can be really challenging because the amount of control you have is a, lot, is a lot less and the amount of information and bandwidth you have is less. So using th these techniques, you can uh, be more effective and actually, you can actually help others have better experience at work just by doing these things. So the first one is uh, lead meetings, step up. If you're in a group of three people or more, somebody's got to facilitate. Don't let meetings go without a strong facilitator. Ideally, the facilitator should not be the power holder in the meeting, but that's a little bit more advanced. We won't talk about that now. So if you're in a meeting and no one else is, seems to know who the facilitator is or why it's happening, uh, just go ahead and step up and say, well, if there's no objections, I'm gonna facilitate this meeting or um, 
uh, so unless someone stops me, um, I'm going to facilitate this meeting. And you're actually inviting someone to stop you, and then you're taking it from there if no one does. Uh, and how that facilitation can look is a few different ways, but a lot of it is just acting like kind of like a traffic cop, kind of like noticing who needs things and then saying, okay, you have a question and do you, can anyone help this person? Okay, so think of yourself as a traffic cop or a referee when you're facilitating. The next item is to do check-in rounds. This is an incredibly powerful thing that I do with all my teams. Um, and it's a part of the tactical meeting process, which is a more advanced technique. But at the beginning of every meeting, pretty much every meeting, or at least once a day, I encourage you to do a check-in round. This is a chance for everyone in the meeting to get present and call out distractions. Um, sometimes people like to do these meditations or you know, quiet time. I'm not talking about that. I think that's BS. I'm just saying, give everybody a chance to say what's on their mind no, dis no discussion, no reactions from anyone. Say what's on your mind and move on to the next person. So if you're facilitating, you say, okay, um, I'd just like to start this meeting off with a check-in round. So this is a chance for us to get present and call out any distractions, and I'll go first. And then you share how you're doing, and you say, okay, Sally, you're check-in. Bob, you're check-in. Andrew, you're check-in. Okay, that was the check-in round. Now let's go back to our meeting. And I'll post a link to a video down below where I show an example of how to do this. Um, just doing the check-in round, it helps people settle internally and gets them more focused. And it also helps the people that are listening understand where the person's coming from. Maybe that person didn't get to have lunch and so they're extra cranky. If you know that, you might treat them a little bit differently in the meeting. It's a really good way to create more team cohesion and bonding, especially when you're working from home in a distributed environment. So I really encourage you to do check-in rounds. And if you try this out and you do the check-in and it works for you, drop me an email uh, or leave a comment down below. I would love to hear about it. Another thing you can do when you're working in teams uh, remotely is setting examples. So if you're in a meeting and uh, uh, something is going on for a while, the moment that you notice that like you're, you got your part of that conversation, you say it. Okay, I think I got what I needed here. We can move on. Um, be an example of how to be effective in meetings. We need more leadership when we're distributed. And even if you're not the boss, even if you're just, you know, just a team member or whatever, you can still help everyone by showing some of that leadership. Say that you got what you needed. You can ask, oh, I'm just wondering who can make that decision if a conversation goes on, goes on too long. Oh, um, so yeah, so who, who, you know, who's accountable for that? Who can make that decision? Be curious and help people get the answers that they need. Don't just sit back and, you know, file your nails or, you know, watch Star Trek while you're in the middle of a meeting. Another move, which is much more advanced here, is uh, tactical meetings. I love the tactical meeting format. This is a special meeting format. It comes in five parts. Um, has, it has, it's rigidly facilitated. It's a just beautiful format. We're not going to go into it here. I have a video that I'll link about how to do tactical meetings. And I also teach tactical meetings professionally. So if you're on a team of three, four, or more people, um, I would love to talk to you about how to make your meetings more effective. Um, in, in one case, there was a study that showed that this actually improved um, decision-making cycle time by 93% using this technique. It's great uh, in person, it's great online. Everyone should be doing tactical meetings. Another thing I put on here, which is, is the idea of doing weekly socials. So you're working at home. There's no more going out to lunch. There's no more grabbing a drink after work. There's no having a donut at you know, 11 o'clock or, or hanging up by the water cooler. What you can do is you can consciously make time to connect emotionally um, or socially by making like an online Zoom meeting for 45 minutes on Friday afternoon or whatever it may be. Sometimes people have beer day, right? Like, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock, you know, have a beer on, on Zoom. Um, but you don't, need, you don't need alcohol to have it be effective. You just have everyone get online and you can do a check-in round. You can have people share how it went. You can also do, uh, if you're really interested in this idea, you can look into what's called authentic relating, which is a set of activities for getting people more connected. Uh, those are great things that you can do and you can do them online. Authentic relating can be a little bit edgy and a little bit on the more emotional, spiritual kind of side of things. Uh, in terms of business, just a weekly social to check in and then if you want to frame this in a way that's a little bit more palatable for the business professional, 
you say that we're doing a retrospective on how it went to work from home this week. So you have everyone get on a call and you do a check-in round like usual. Um, and then you say, okay, so what, what did people learn this week or what worked or what didn't work about working from home? And invite people to share their experience. They can share techniques. They can share their mood or you know whatever worked or didn't work. If you're a power holder, you can hold this meeting and then you can say, this is great input. I'm going to try to apply some of this knowledge to the future. And you might change the way your team works by doing these weekly social meetings or retrospective meetings, depending on how you frame it. And the word retrospective comes from uh, Agile software. It's a way to do continuous improvement. So I want to share with you one secret weapon that I have for doing online meetings that I just really love. And it's called Loom. Loom is a tool I discovered that allows you to quickly and easily record a video with a screen share and then send it to somebody through email. So if you are sending someone a message and it's kind of maybe an emotional message or maybe it's fairly detailed or elaborate and you don't want to sit there and type, you know, two pages of text or you don't really want to um, have it come off wrong, like, you're, like you really want the emotional quality to be kept in the message and you can't get them on, you can't get them on Zoom because, you know, you don't know where they are, they're in a different time zone or whatever. You can use Loom to record a video and send that video over to them. Let's try recording one now and I can show you how it works. So I'm gonna to go to Google here and then we're gonna see if we can use Loom to make a video. So I just clicked on, uh, just clicked on Loom. I'm gonna say full desktop. Um, and I've got a couple of webcams here, so I need to switch this up to use the correct webcam. Let's go with this one. And we'll use our regular microphone. Um, but basically with Loom, all you do is click the Loom button, click start record, and now it's asking me which screen I want to share. I'm going to share this browser window here. Okay, share, three, two, one. And so I'm just going to say, um, hey Sally, I just wanted you to uh, take a look at this website. It's a news site. It's, um, it's got some good news on it. And uh, down here I was seeing this quote here, uh, decision comes from a, amid a widespread closure of movie theaters. I thought this would be a great quote for our um, newsletter or whatever. But basically we type in here, we click green, and now you've got a link to a video that you can send to your colleague with you talking about uh, whatever the issue was. So you just copy that link, paste it in a browser, or paste it into an email and send it to them. Um, so this is Loom, it's one of my favorite tools. They're not sponsoring this video, I just really love it. Uh, it's very easy to use and it's just a quick uh, Chrome extension browser plugin. If you wanna try it out, it is at loom.us. That's my secret weapon for uh, working better online at home. So my last question is, what are your challenges? What kind of issues are you facing uh, now that you're being asked to work at home? What's working and what isn't? Please leave a comment down below and maybe I can make a video about it or you can send me an email. You can reach me at j at teal.dog and you can also reach me at teal.dog slash chat. Um, if you just type into your browser teal.dog slash chat, that brings up a window and you can start a conversation with me right there. Um, I'm really, really interested and really personally passionate about helping people work better together, uh, both in teams and individually. So if I can assist you or your team, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you want more videos like this, leave a like. If you subscribe, that helps me know to make more videos. Uh, it's a hard time right now, and we all need to help each other do the best we can to get through this. So. If there's anything I can do, please reach out to me, um, and it is my wish that you are effective and healthy and safe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.